Welcome back. Alison, before the break, we were saying that we're going to go to passive radiation. Yes. Um, just before we do that, though, because we're talking about babies, yes. can we just mention some of the different baby monitors? Yeah, baby, baby monitors are really important. And again, this is something that uh, mothers just don't, parents, not mothers, but parents in general, just have no idea about. Yeah. And I understand the importance of baby monitors so that you can hear what's going on if you're in a different room. There is an enormous difference between the monitors you used to get, which were analog monitors, and the current monitors, which are digital monitors. They're called DECT, D-E-C-T. The digital monitors are, use the microwave radiation, the pulsed radiation. Mm -hmm. And when you hear them, you can actually hear them pulsing. Um, and and c coming back to the, what we were talking about at the very beginning, one of the reasons that this microwave radiation, the telecommunications technology, is so detrimental to health, it's the way we, we send the information. So it's packeted together and hung on a radio wave, but then the way we send it is it's pulsed. And it's now believed that it's that pulsing mm -hmm that causes the most disruption to our electrical, our own electrical system. Is that because we pulse? Well, you can imagine that you, you've got like a, a, a very delicate little system that's got its own rhythm. Yeah. You know, and in nature, everything's a sine wave. And we talk about taking our pulse. We do. Yeah. And it's a very soft, cyclical yeah. rhythm. But this digital technology is, is very violent, and it pulses like that. Okay. And it completely disrupts our own system. Doesn't that make sense? It does, when yeah. you, and particularly if you see the visuals of it, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's like a bar chart as opposed to a sine wave. So, so it's completely foreign to it. And that's one, of, that's one of the reasons why our system reacts as it does, our immune system, because it's such um, a foreign type of radiation for us, a foreign type of electricity. Our immune system is activated to try and defend ourselves from this foreigner, this invader, and then our, our immune system is just depleted because it has to work so hard the whole time. So the baby monitor and the effect on the child? Thank you for bringing me back there. <laughs> That's okay. That's what I need to do. So the baby monitors, so they pulse yeah. because it's got this, this pulsed modulation, the, the digital radiation, which the old style analog monitors didn't have. Oh. But if you put, it's like the cordless phone, that the side that you put next to the baby will be spraying microwave radiation throughout the nursery. And the closer your baby is to that monitor, the more exposed they are. And it's not just the effect on the baby, is it? Because for the parent, they can actually put their end of the... Absolutely. They're made to put on the belt yep. or in a pocket, yep. which then is affecting their whole, Absol the mother's milk. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Particularly if the mother's breastfeeding, yep. but yep. wherever and wherever you put it, yep. you know, if you put it here, it's next next to your breast and your heart. Yep. If you put it on your on your waist, it's next to your liver. Yeah, yep. wherever. Okay, so let's have a, um, a look at a demonstration with uh, with a baby monitor. Excellent. This is just a quick demonstration to show you the huge amount of radiation that comes out of a digital baby alarm. This is a professional quality radio frequency meter. It makes the radiation audible. Now this alarm is, is already up, it's on, so I'm going to turn this on. You'll hear a huge amount of noise, that's the radiation, and then we'll pull the plug and you'll hear the radiation die away. So the radiation stopped because we unplugged it, and for your baby, that's the very best thing you can do. Wow, that was fascinating, yeah. just seeing that effect. Okay, so passive radiation. Passive, passive. Exactly like passive smoking. Yeah. If you enjoy smoking, um, you're also affecting everyone around you. Yeah. It's exactly the same with using a mobile phone, a cell phone. Whenever you make a call, the, um, the area of radiation coming out of that cell phone envelops everyone around it mm -hmm. and the closer they are to your phone the more they're affected mm -hmm. so again this is particularly important mothers don't know fathers don't know is if you've got a cell, cell phone conversation going on and you're holding on to a baby well yeah 
Yeah. And the other area where passive radiation um, is really important are areas where people can't get away from you if you're making a phone call, or yeah. you can't get away from them. And that is particularly relevant to um, planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> so if you're in a car, yep. again, particularly children, if they're in a car being driven around by an adult, and that adult is on the phone, because this radiation is reflected by metal, mm -hmm. it will bounce around the car instead of escaping entirely from the car. And that's the principle behind a microwave oven. Yep. It bounces to cook the food. It bounces off the metal and it yep. can't escape and it cooks the food. And so then we come to trains, it's exactly the same effect. Buses. Buses. And, and what about planes? Particularly planes. You might be stuck in a plane for five hours, 13 hours. And what, what I'm particularly sad to see is how they're allowing more and more appliances to be used on planes. And there's even more metal in planes, there's fewer windows, so it's bouncing around all the time we're using these. And it's a concern for, um, it's a concern for us, particularly for those of us who are more sensitive. And who travel a lot. And who travel a lot. But yeah. think about the cabin crew. There are already health issues for cabin crew with the extra radiation they're exposed to by flying up so high. And now we've added this different form of radiation and locked them up in a metal tube. And it's really something that um, airlines need to be mindful of, both for their staff in terms of, maybe in terms of duty of care. Duty of care. And also for their, their customers, their passengers. Well, also just on the travel. So someone who, who does do a lot of travel with their work or whatever, Usually along with things like planes, go hotels. Yeah. And most hotels are Wi-Fi. Most hotels. The first thing I do when I walk into a first of all, I research mm -hmm. and I phone up and I find out how extensive the Wi-Fi is. In an ideal world, for me, they just have Wi-Fi in the foyer. Okay. And they have cable broadband in a room. Yeah. Um, the first thing I do when I walk into a hotel room is I make straight for the modem mm -hmm. and I will turn it off. Yep. Um, then I will look straight around and see if the phone's corded or cordless. If, if so, I'll take every cordless phone out that I can find. And then the next thing I do is I look at the bedside and it's almost always a digital alarm clock. Um, and that's a different form of radiation, but radiation nonetheless. And I unplug that. The reason I'm smiling is, is I can just see you walking into the hotel room and going, right, I'm on a mission. But, you know, seriously, we all need to be on a mission. We, we do. I mean... Look at the view later, but if, if you do that, you can almost guarantee you'll sleep better. And, and the then, other thing that you do in a hotel room, because you were talking about how the rooms often mirror each other. Yes, that, what I try and find out is very often you find that rooms mirror each other, so your headboard will back onto the headboard of the room behind you. Yeah. And you can often see this when you go down the corridor and they're cleaning. If my headboard backs onto the headboard of the room behind me, I know that even though I've moved, moved my digital clock and my cordless phone yeah. and unplugged them, they may have the same thing behind me. That's close enough to keep me awake at night. So if I'm stuck in that situation, there's nothing I can do about it. Often I'll move the bed mm -hmm. or I'll, if in the worst case scenario, I'll have to drag the mattress or sleep on a sofa or something. <laughs> but it's, it's worth doing because I yeah. know I'll get a good night. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll be awake all night, not know why. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now I was also just picturing you walking down the, the hallway when the... Snooping. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm not snooping for anything. Now the other thing also that you had mentioned when you and I were chatting was when you go to a hotel, you also look at where the building is facing yes. antennas. I've learned from experience that if my hotel room is the windows facing a, a mobile phone antenna, I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. And often I just don't feel well as, as well. Yeah. So with my favourite hotels, if I go to somewhere time and time again, I've literally learned which side of the building to request a room on. Yeah. And that makes a big difference to me. So it's difficult when you're going to a hotel for the first time. Although nowadays with, with uh, Google Earth, you can get a street view, you can have a look around and I do do that. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and that's another. For those, because there are people who are extra sensitive to this. Yes. Um, Whilst it may affect everyone, some people have got an extra range of sensory perception where they can feel this. Yeah. Either the effects may be far more for them than for other people, or they may be able to detect it the second it's turned on. Yeah. And um, they're called, uh, this is a condition called electrosensitivity, yeah. which may be affecting, it's hard to pin it down, maybe 10% of people now. Some are saying to some range, maybe 35% of people. 
And there are predictions some scientists have made that maybe short term, in the very near future, maybe 50% of people will have some, some aspects of electrosensitivity. It may be that they're just tired all the time or they've got headaches or they've got skin irritations or they've got asthma or... And it's not recognised. I mean, our doctors are, are unfortunately not trained in this. They have no idea that there is a syndrome called electrosensitivity. Yeah. And if the source of the radiation is just taken away... And the unfortunate thing is many people, you know, go through countless specialists trying to find out. Yeah. And um, it's very hard to get to an answer for them. Yeah. Wow. It's a big issue. We'll take another break and come back for the last part of our conversation with Alison. <laughs> 